right, Dave, what have we got on the agenda for today then? So the other day I had a call from a guy and long story short, his neighbour who lives up the road recently passed away. Now he's got no family or friends or anything. So now this guy has been left in charge of clearing out the house. But more importantly, he has to clear out the barn. And in that old barn is an old banger. He doesn't even know what the car is. He said he's got a key, it's under a load of blankets. He just wants us to go there, pull it out and give it a clean up so he can then sell it on. But I tell you this, he said the strangest of things on the phone, which got me thinking, what is he on about? He said, do I believe in evil spirits? And I was like, well, of course I do. Have you not met my mother-in-law? But I was like, why is that? So I did a little bit of research. And basically when I say research, I mean, I went on Google for about five minutes, then went back on TikTok. But it turns out that this old house that we're going to has a very dark and mysterious history. In the early 1800s, there was loads of reports of people going missing. And it turns out after 10 years, someone discovered this old barn on this property. And inside that property were loads of skulls, body parts, blood stains over all these blankets. It was horrible. And it turns out that this old guy was the reason that these people were going missing. It's not that, Dave. Are you sure we should be going there? Look, all I know is the guy said be there for half past eight and I don't want to be late because he sounded like a bit of a maniac. You do realise it's 8.45. Oh, for f sake. We began our journey through the foggy countryside, having no idea what laid ahead and with good reason. An address with no postcode often rings alarm bells, but eventually we made it, wherever it was. You could just tell something or someone was watching us. This was getting tense, and to make matters worse, we were lost. Where are we? Just put the sat nav on. Okay, Google, where are we? You have arrived at the land of the dead. We carried on past the creepy lakes, not knowing what was around the corner until eventually we made it to a dead end. So we had to take a new route on foot. We trekked for miles, and little did we know, things were about to get serious. We soon discovered what appeared to be a car graveyard, but then we heard something out of the ordinary. <sighs> what is that noise? Is that someone having a vape? No, 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 no! Is it that one? <laughs> this is the car we are working on today. The creepy, the mysterious, and the only car we could find before Halloween, the Mercedes-Benz CL500. And this car was covered in all sorts of mud and grass, which was already like this when we got here, of course. But nevertheless, we wanted to make this 800 pound car look like an 8,000 pound car. Could we pull it off? Let's find out. There better not be any nasty surprises. Get up, get up, get up. <laughs> Do 
Job one was to remove the leaves that we didn't put there off the car and clear all the sticks out the gullies. But after a few minutes of getting bored, I thought I'd go for the ultimate cleaning method. The pressure washer. But this just isn't any old pressure washer. This is the Nilfisk P180, a powerhouse of pressure that could easily blast a rocket into space if it wanted to. And normally you wouldn't set it to full power, but when you have a car like this, I simply couldn't resist. And to show you what I mean, just take a look at this. As you can see, this machine was piercing its way through the mould without any chemicals. And while you may look at the Lance and think it does look massive, it does actually have a crazy amount of benefits to its design, like a quick release, and it's also light. But best of all, you don't get wet. And after a few minutes of obliterating through all the dirt, we were ready to move on to the next stage. With the Mercedes fully rinsed and clear of leaves, we could now move on to the engine bay. And for this, we're just giving it a clean using Yum Citrus and a rinse, as we won't be entering this into any concourse competition anytime soon. After deciding this was the most effective method for cleaning for us, we did the same for all the door shuts, the boot shut and the petrol cap, and it didn't take long for the Citrus to destroy its way through the mud. And this incredible spray bottle we're using is a Presso Industrial Bottle and this one's got a unique feature so for every one press on the trigger you get two squirts of chemical back so it can be a real time saver. Next up for this bad boy was the wheels and tyres and I'm also using more citrus pre-wash on the arches too just to give them a deeper clean. And I'm starting off with Yum and Dress, as I want to remove any old tire dressings, so it gives me a completely decontaminated surface, then I can redress them later. And also, I'm sticking with Yum wheels, as there was quite a bit of brake dust and fallout on the barrels of the alloys, even though the faces didn't look too bad. For the tyres we're using a stiff brush just to give that extra cleaning power and for the alloys I'm using my trusty soft brushes along with my wheel willies. And I find these are great for getting in where the wheel nuts go. And I love to use shampoo in a wheel bucket just to add some lubrication to the cleaning process. The foam of choice is Purple Haze by Alien Magic and I'm also using the brand new foam cannon from Dual Car Care to see how the combination of both cannon and foam perform. And when it comes to promoting yourself out in the public, there's no better way than to use snow foam and when you use coloured snow foam, it definitely grabs people's attention. So it's nice to have a mix of different colours to showcase for potential clients. The dual foam cannon features a big mouth, so cleaning after use is easier and it looks like a cross between Iron Man and Banana Man, but nevertheless it's great fun to use and a brilliant cannon for anybody who's on a budget. The thing with snow foams is they will perform a lot better on cloudy cool days as they have longer dwelling times without drying. So it can be quite difficult in the summer when you're in direct sunlight, so this one made light work of the Mercedes because of the weather. And when it came to rinsing off, that ultimately made life a lot easier for the contact wash. After I finished a big rinse, I went for another product from Dual Car Care, and this time round it was their shampoo called Bahama Blue, which was a first for me trying this brand, and I was really pleased that it had plenty of suds and lubrication, not to mention the cleaning power. And I left this one on the paintwork for as long as possible to see if it would smear, and I was impressed that I could wash it off with no streaks, so I'm looking forward to trying this one again in another video. So I'm carrying out the two bucket method here, and the red wash mitt I'm using is from Valet Pro, and I always use soft brushes on the exterior and the only time I use the stiffer brushes is for areas like the door locks and maybe the petrol cap. And instead of using a stiff brush for the badge areas, I go for a water spot remover just to reduce the risk of scratching. 
At this point, I'm just giving the car a rinse to remove the shampoo, but instead of drying, I'll be using the clay block first, and I want to use it on the upper two thirds of the car, just to remove some of the fallout contaminants that have built up over the years. And the lubricant I'm using is from Expert 60, and I also went for the young car's clay block instead of the clay bar. And the thing I love about using clay blocks over the bars is the time you save. You don't have to warm it up in your hands and if you drop it, you can rinse it off. So this is the best option for decontaminating. And to be fair, it didn't take long to get this car ready. So I gave it one more rinse before getting my towels out ready to dry. Drying the car was a piece of cake and it was going well until my dad gifted the universe the worst joke of all time. Dad, when you finish faffing about, do you think you can give me a hand? The lower third of the car had a few tar spots on that needed removing, so I'm applying Go Detailing's tar remover until I was happy. And time was flying by so quick, we knew that if we were gonna get this car finished, we would have to step on it. The trim around the window was covered in old chemical stains and the bodywork looked pretty flat and dull. So I got out my polishers and got cracking. And this is the first time I'm featuring the new KDN Nano Polisher, which is battery operated. And considering it is battery powered, it packs one hell of a punch. And this polisher was handy for all the small areas like door pillars and around the edges of the panels where the larger machines simply can't cut it. Plus it was an opportunity for me to try the new Autoglim compound too. While I had the nano polisher out, I couldn't help but stare at the lights and they looked more foggier than my special effects. So I couldn't resist but give them a quick polish too. So normally when you do headlight restoration, you wet sand them first. But as this was just a quick tidy up, I wanted to see whether the compound and the machine alone could give me a significant improvement. And it did. I had one more polisher to try out and this time round I got my mini rotary polisher just to finish off the wheels before protecting them with Pyramid Car Care's alloy armour. And with all the polishing now done, it's time to protect the car. My wax of choice for today's detail is Valet Pro's Indulgence Wax. And this one smells like rhubarb and custard sweets and it's a creamy wax, which added a nice gloss to the paintwork. And the rule of waxing in Britain is simple. The second you finish waxing your car, it starts raining. It doesn't even matter if it's hot and sunny, I can guarantee the second you finish off with that last buff, it will pee it down. So I was starting to get a little bit worried. Once I was happy with the wax, I had to clean the glass and it's another first for Dual Car Care's optical glass cleaner. And I'm using this with my very own method that never ever fails me. And I'm using my synthetic leather for the glass followed by my yellow towels. The end was so close, I could sense the weather was about to turn. And when it comes to finishing a car off, it's the little things that matter the most to my clients. And if you haven't tried this tire moisturizer yet, then you need to see this because this without doubt is one of the biggest game changers for tire dressings because it's beautifully thin and it penetrates the tires without getting greasy and slimy. This was one epic journey. We started the day unsure of what laid ahead. We had just a few hours to perform a miracle on this car and we did. We came, we conquered and we cleaned. But most importantly, we stuck together. This is the way it's always been. And this business can be very lonely if you work alone. So you need to stay focused mentally. And I'm lucky because anytime things have ever gone wrong, I've always had my family back in my corner. And I know our time on this planet isn't gonna last forever, but if you can leave a legacy behind for your own family, then I urge you get out there and make something happen. And you only get one shot at life. And if you wanna do this business, then you have gotta understand it's not gonna be easy. It is gonna be tough, 
and it's not all glamorous but if you step up you can become something so much more so don't screw it up and before we leave i just want to say a massive thank you to every single company who supported this video on this epic journey So there you have it. This just goes to show you don't need a fancy studio if you want to make your car look amazing. All you need is a good bit of weather, a couple of good products and an old banger to work on. Join us next week as we'll be featuring another day in the life of a detailer. I'll see you later. Bye bye. Right, let's just do a... Oh, f so there you have it. It just goes to show you don't need a fancy studio if you want to make your car look like... Oh, fuck, it's put me right off now. <laughs> That's so annoying, Dad, seriously.